What's up, everybody? My name is Lihua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lihua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Dungeon Black Company. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you'll be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Dungeon Black Company episode 5. This episode was actually really good. Like, I'm super impressed with it i loved it and like other episode reviews we're just gonna do a recap and then we're gonna point things out that was really interesting to us this episode followed episode four where ninomiya and rem they fell through a portal and they were actually summoned and what happened was 300 years ago a demon lord appeared and there was a prophecy and they summoned a messiah and it turns out it's ninomiya and yeah, what's interesting was their demon lord appeared after a corporation made the humans weak. And I'm thinking, okay, corporation, this sounds really similar to where Nino Mia was previously from. I wonder if this is the same world. But a lot of things are really different. This place that Nina Mia was summoned to was underground. There's a lot of buildings that were made out of metal. It was high tech while the world before was kind of primitive, not primitive, but it wasn't as advanced. There we go. Many ways, Nina Mia was summoned. He was summoned to be a messiah. Uh, they want him to save them from the demon lord. And Nina Mia is like, no. I don't want to work for people who are relying on others. And then Nehemiah is threatened. He's like, if you don't help us, then we're going to kill you. And he's like, Ugh, you guys are scumbags. And then they're like, oh, but according to the prophecy, the path to Japan will open after defeating the demon lord. And Nina was like, you guys suck. That was going to be your trump card for me since the beginning. And they're like, oh, oh. well... And I'm thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> these people, they don't have much integrity. But that's what I like about this show. It's its sort of like a lot of isekais, but not. There's like a lot of twists here and there. Anyways, so Rim and Inomiya head out. And then they're joined by Ranga, the priestess who summoned them. And then it turns out Ranga is actually a boy. And... He was only the priestess because he was the only one who had a lot of magic power and according to the prophecies the one who has a lot of magic power is the priestess and the priestess will summon the messiah and for some reason ranga just like went with the road he totally lived it he's into the whole magical girl thing i don't know where he gets this from but he looks like belza he looks like belza who was like in charge of the corporation where nina meal is from then they venture out because they're underground, right? They're underground. They go out and Nino Mia recognizes this place. He saw like a sort of American Statue of Liberty, a Belza. That was kind of trippy. It totally reminded me of Planet of the Apes. If you haven't seen Planet of the Apes, it's about like this uh, astronaut who somehow goes to the future and he doesn't know he's on Earth until he sees the Statue of Liberty. So <laughs> I think it was making fun of that. <laughs> And um, as they're traveling, Ram gets hungry. So they're like, oh, shoot, we need to stop someplace. And Ranga's like, oh, there's the Demon Lord's castle. They get there, and it's not the Demon Lord's castle. But there's something interesting. There's a little, like, sort of engraving in the building, and it looks like an ant. So I was thinking, oh, I, I wonder if the Ant Queen is still around because this is the future. It turns out it's not the Ant Queen that's there, but Ant A. Ant A was there. He's the general and he has like an ant farm. And over there, he asked Nino Mia's help. He asked him to help make the humans that they conquered work. And it's really funny because he took everything he learned from Nino Mia about like human resources, fairness, and whatnot. He applied that to the humans that they conquer, but they're like, they still don't want to work. It was hilarious. And so Nino Mia was like, okay, I'll help you. And he somehow made the work system more competitive. They still like apply some like isekai stuff, like enslavement. Well, not enslavement but torture, <laughs> uh, physical abuse, I would say, physical abuse. 
but they also made it like it was a type of corporation and such. And they rewarded those who followed and they physically hurt those who didn't follow, which created the comp competitiveness, which also created people who want to be superior to others, which created others who felt inferior and they're like, oh, well, I want to be up there too. So it was perfect. And Nina Mia, he was like living the life and Ranga, even though Ranga's the priestess, he's like, I'm having fun because I'm actually out here. And Ranga's going all for it. Rim is there all happy, eating food. Then Daniel Mia goes back to the underground place that summoned him. He's like, I am now the general of Ant Farm. And uh, we're going to rule over you now. So I'm your boss and my bad. <laughs> the people were like shocked. They look betrayed. But it's kind of satisfying because the one who threatened to kill... You know, Mia, he, oh, the look on his face, he was so shocked. He was like perplexed. He, it was hilarious. I, I felt really satisfied after seeing that. And for one episode to be so interesting, I loved it. What made this episode really interesting is Ninomiya was summoned. The first time he was transported to another world, it seemed like it was a fluke and such. And then he gets summoned. And he thought he got summoned to another world. So he was getting pissed off that he was just being moved from world to world. And then it turned out that he was in the same one. He was still in Almeria. But 300 years later. And it was kind of like post-apocalyptic. Like Ryzaha did something bad. Like shady. And it turned out that they got too power hungry i think they got too power hungry and they took over the world and they just made too much corporate grunts the corporation made the humans weak and then the demon lord took over it was a perfect time for the demon lord to attack because there were not much people fighting that much strength because everybody was like everybody was like kind of brain dead and then they said that the demon lord attacked and conquered with monsters now if we remember the monsters came from the dungeon so i'm thinking the demon lord came from the dungeons and the way that they show the demon lord like the silhouette and such it really looks like the ant queen i'm not too sure if she's the demon lord but i think she is but it'll be really 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 funny if the demon lord is one that would be hilarious but then he would have to be alive 300 years later right I think it's him. I think so. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. <laughs> I'm hoping it is. <laughs> and then um, with Belza, the one who was in charge of the corporation that made the citizens into corporate grunts, I think Ranga is related to her because they do look very similar to, to each other. And sometimes whenever we see Ranga talking, he'll like be silent and have like a look of guilt and whatnot. I think he is related to her. He feels guilty for being her descendant. That's my theory. If you guys have other theories, please let me know in the comments below. Another thing I found interesting was so the ones who survived the Demon Lord's attack ran away underground. So how did they build this city underground? It took them, they were down there for about 300 years. Were they there? building this city or was the city there already and if they're underground are they in the dungeon um i'm very curious about this place all they show is underground but i think there's more to, to this place than they're letting on and i'm hoping we'll learn more about it and then the whole prophecy and japan so they had like this prophecy saying the messiah will help them and it mentioned japan 300 years later Someone must have like gotten information about Ninomiya. Because Ninomiya is the only one I know in this story that's from Japan. He must have said Japan 300 years ago. And for some reason, he was going to be summoned 300 years later. Like, I don't know what happened 300 years ago after he left. Because... The whole Japan thing, uh, it's really, really, really fishy to me because I don't think 
Minumiya mentioned Japan when he got summoned. Like right there, he said Japan. They're like, ooh, we gotta use that against them. It seems like Japan's really important. No, Japan really must have been in that whole prophecy thing. Something happened. I'm not too sure, but I, I think it's going to be revealed later on. And I think this was planned for Nino Mio to be brought 300 years later. Or if not, someone wanted Nino Mio to come back because he just disappeared, right? To everybody he knew, he just disappeared. I think someone wanted him to come back. And they just set up this whole thing just for him to be summoned. Now, I know I talked about Ranga before, but I do want to point out that I think it's hilarious that they made Ranga like a magical girl. So Ranga is the priestess and the priestess is someone who has a lot of magical power. Ranga was the only one who had a lot of magical power. Therefore, he became the priestess and he just fulfilled that role as a priestess, right? So I don't know how this happened, but he got this whole magical girl facade and it was it's really good it's believable it makes fun of a lot of magical girl or priestess characters especially loli kind and ranga i feel like this is making fun of this type of character because he's all into nino mia he's being super flirty and i love how they have nino mia playing it off and like at first, he was like kind of grossed out because he's like, oh, this is a kid. But then somehow he sensed that Ranga was a guy. I don't know how this happened, but he just like grabs his pelvis area. <laughs> and I was like, how did Nino Mia know this was a guy? Not, like, how? Where did Ranga get the whole magical girl thing from? Like, where did he learn that in this underground? civilization i mean they've been underground for 300 years you know what i mean it's really funny how they have a dynamic between ranga and ninomiya because ranga is still pushing for seducing ninomiya in a very teasing way and ninomiya plays it off so well he's like you're too young to be sexy and whatnot wait for another 10 years then try again and uh, ranga's like oh wait for me then i'll make you fall for me it's so funny and the next thing i want to talk about is when they're outside and they encounter general ant town the ant farm so when we first see this fortress we saw like a type of drawing or engraved that looked like an ant and it turned out it was an ant and there is a general who was in charge of this fortress area it was ant a who Nino Mia first sort of turned over into his side when we had that ant episode and such. And it turned out Ant A evolved somehow, was blessed by the demon lord, and became a general, became a man monster and a general. And he was running his area just like a corporation, but with fear, treatment, and whatnot. The weird thing is no one wanted to work. I, I guess it's it was because there was too much fairness. And because they weren't working, Aunt A was like, I need help. So Nino Mia put more force, added the physical abuse, and made like a whole security, inferiority, and competition, and made this whole area working again and because Ninomiya was in charge he was in charge of this whole fortress now and Aunt A was following him so now Ninomiya has authority he's the boss and he's like I don't want to be the messiah anymore and he goes back to the underground place and tells them okay I'm not your messiah anymore I have a way better position where with benefits and I get treated better I'm gonna do this. I'm working with the demon lord, not gonna fight the demon lord, so I'm gonna conquer you guys. You're gonna work for me, and sorry, not sorry. Uh, it was hilarious. And Ranga is just standing there, like all happy. It's like, Ranga, you had no loyalty. You just wanted to be free. You were sick and tired of being in that underground place, and now that you're free, you're like, deuces. Now that's how the episode ended. I I think Minamiya still needs to encounter the Demon Lord. And the Demon Lord, it seems the Demon Lord is hard to meet with. Like, you have to be at a higher up position. That's what Aunt A said. So, I'm wondering if Minamiya is going to try climb up the ladder so he can meet with the Demon Lord. 
that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. If you guys have any theories and such, let me know. And that just concludes my review of Dungeon Black Company Episode 5. If I missed anything that you wanted to have been mentioned in this video, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't seen the episode, what's your impression of it? And if you guys want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash like host Rufina. If you watch these videos, like to stop by the stream outside of YouTube and Twitch. I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Super Fina channel reviewing Dungeon Black Company Episode 5. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Super Fina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.